Nick, my man. G Money. One of our end of year podcasts coming up here. It's crazy. We're already close to 2024. Exciting, man. How Exciting. how would you say 2023 went for you? Ups and downs, mostly ups. Okay. That's awesome. Like um, a lot of contracts. Yeah. A lot of uh, falling contracts, unfortunately. That's kind of the theme of the year. Part, huh? part of the, yeah, it's part of the business, but overall, amazing year. Yeah. No, man. Killed it. What what are you at this year right now? Close to nine. Nine, man. Fucking wild. Dude. Nine. Um, over. I mean, closed and pending or only closed? We talk closed and pendings. Uh, 9.5. Ish. <laughs> Fucking go. Yeah. So you already got spilled over 2024, yeah? Yeah. Yeah. I have, uh, what do I got? Two, three for 2024 already and a bunch of more offers out there, man. Yeah, hopefully, dude, dude, dude. hopefully. You're, you're, ki- you're king of throwing it up and just seeing what sticks. Yeah, whatever sticks, exactly. It doesn't matter. You got the, you got the best mindset with that, with that you know, high volume, high uh, production mindset. It's well, I mean, listen, you, you, you kind of have to, you know, if you get way too emotionally attached to all these contracts and you start counting in your head yeah. and be like, oh my God, like <clears throat> two million, three million, four million, then like two fell apart and then you go, you go into down and be like, oh my God, I'm, I don't know what I'm doing. And then you have two more and then it's just, I don't know, like my mentality is just, Put as many as you can under contract. To help as many people as you can. And if the contract falls apart, the contract falls apart. The most important part for me is just be honest to your clients, man. Yeah. You okay. know, yeah. honestly. If some one. if something happens, if the building is shit, you know, if the condo has a lot of problems, if the house is like, you know, falling apart, just be honest and be like, yeah. let, let, let's get out, let's find something else. I think one of the best ways to look at deals, it's like you don't necessarily I don't, I, I tell my clients, I don't care what house I sell you. I want to sell you the right house. Mm-hmm. So when you have a deal fall through, right, because your clients trust you, I call that a delayed sale. So it's not as much of a, man, I lost that sale. It's like, no, no, it's just delayyed. You True. Know, it's going gonna, it's gonna to come. It's just not, it might not come as soon as we thought, but it's going to be coming. And then that is such a mentality of, of building trust and long-term relationship building with clients that has helped me grow my business, but that's also your principle. Well, I agree. Like, Give me your input on something. I, I was actually I was actually thinking about it like yeah. one of those shower thoughts. So for example, <laughs> you know, you have a client under contract, right? Yeah. And the person loses his job. The contract falls apart because the guy can't afford it. Yeah. But let's say you had him like you had that person under contract like two months ago mm-hmm. and the deal fell apart again. Would you would you consider this to be like a blessing in disguise that like you kind of like you kind of save that person a headache of maybe going to foreclosure because they might not be able to oh, pay yeah. the mortgage or you're like, God damn it. What if I like, what if we close the first one? And then, I mean, you know, people eventually figure it out. Yeah. But what is your thought on that? My thought is that we we deal with adults, right? And it's not my job to know what is going on on the financial and personal side of your life. If you're buying a house, my job is to is to give you and make sure you have the right information to make the decision, the right decision to buy the right house at the right price of what you are qualified for. You know, I'm not sitting at the job with you and, you know, realizing that you're being an asshole to your coworkers <laughs> or you're not doing as good of a job, right? I mean, True. at the end of the day, like uh, my my responsibility ends on what my specialties give, right? Yeah. So I'm not a, I'm not a career coach. True. I'm a house coach. True. I'll coach you to the right house. Yeah. True. But I also I can't do the Excel spreadsheets for you on at your job if you're not doing them a good job. Like I'm sorry, man. Yeah. But I think your mindset of like not worrying so much about the loss of the sale and un- also understanding the humanity behind losing a job. Yeah. Is what makes you you. Like even the fact that you asked me that question, right? Like it's like your your care goes well above and beyond what your average realtor thinks. Yeah, I mean, it happened to me three times this year. That's why, specifically, specifically in this in this scenario, like yeah, we're like I was under contract for like with a client for one place, things didn't work out. Like they, we didn't get enough credits, or something was wrong with the place, or the reserves were too low for a sure. building in a condo and stuff like that. They had like pending litigations, like what was yeah. it, fifteen hundred more or whatever building was that, and then. Two months later, you know, we go under contract for another place, yeah. and. Two weeks into the contract, I lost my job. That happened three times. Yeah, that's wild. And I'm like, okay. Did you see it as a, is it a consistent industry that these people are in? IT. Or? IT, yeah. It's a bad, bad year for IT, man. Bad year for IT. I mean, like two years ago, they probably would have a double the budget and, yep. you know, d- just deep pockets. With the, with, the inter- with the interest rates two years ago, they they would have, they, they could have afforded probably three times more than what they could afford right now. Yeah. Well, I had, um, 
I have a couple of really good friends who work in IT and they basically tell me the way that they were let go, they're ruthless, man. Yeah, they, well, you know what I mean? They, they basically, dude, they yeah. go on a Zoom meeting, 10 o'clock, and they say, after the Zoom meeting is over, they have a separate phone call with you, basically tell you, close your laptop, you're no longer employed at this Wild. company. Once you turn off your laptop and you turn back on, everything's wiped. I mean, it's IT, dude. It's like that world is high thrills, huge anxiety, massive risk, right? I mean, Spotify is letting go of their like... Yeah, they're cutting like 20% or something. Is what, but like 20% is like tens of thousands. It might be like, yeah, I think it's tens of thousands of jobs. Like those are Well, no, they, they don't have that many. I think they have yeah. like about 10,000 jobs total. Oh, really? I think so, like from what I read last. But oh. I mean, it's a lot. It's a lot of people. It's yeah. a lot of jobs. And Spotify was like the golden shining star. They mm -hmm. like, you know, had the best podcast at a certain point. So yeah, I mean, once that road turns, but I would say for like those individuals that are in IT, they have a highly need in need skill. So I think it's just, you know, again, that industry grew too fast mm -hmm. and it needed to reevaluate itself. So I think that, you know, I mean, I'm sure they already either found a job or they're looking for a job. I mean, what, what's the status of that? I mean, the status is like, I keep following, I keep following up, you know, and you know, that's the worst part about our job is like when somebody encounters a like life altering event. Yeah. Loss of a like loss of a loved one or loss of a job or anything like that. You kind of you kind of look like an asshole following up with a person. Hey, you find out a job, like you're still looking to yeah. buy, you know. The, I go a little bit more into um I, I tread carefully there. You yeah. Know? I go like after a couple of months and be like, hey, how's yeah. the job search going, all that stuff, like how you feel. But again, like you said, we're in the business of selling houses, not uh, not therapy. Well, and also like we are a resource for people, right? So I don't necessarily, um, with follow up, right? Like which is something I want to talk to you about, you know, we don't stay alive if we don't follow up, True. right? Prospecting, True. constant pushing, staying top of mind. If those things are not in your wheelhouse, you're never going to grow as a broker, True. right? And those hesitations of, um, you know, I don't want to, you know, annoy or ir irritate, right? Like I still have those feelings, but then I remember I'm also calling to check in and see what's going on. And I always want to provide more value, right? Sure. So like those quarterly reports, Nick picks, right? Like the things that we do, it's next level value, right? The stuff that just informs resources, right? Value, 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 right? So that they can come back to us and be like, you know what? You educated me. You stayed. You stayed with me. At the end of the day, I'm not a charity worker, right? True. I'm very clear that I'm in the business of selling houses, but also I'm essentially, you know, giving va as much value as I possibly can, because the reward is that they're going to use me to buy their house. They can use all these other brokers to buy their house, but I found that if you can over deliver on the value throughout the relationship process, the I will give you my business is the reward, right? Because they can go to like any discount broker. They can go somewhere here or sure. there. But if you can show expertise and you can show that you can actually give them more than just opening a door, they're going to come to you because mm -hmm. they know you're giving them more than more value. But I hear you. It's, it's challenging, man, when, when, you know, you obviously want to tread carefully. I mean, with a loss of somebody or whatever, like that's not like, you know, they're going to need some time. Absolutely, yeah. But, uh, Sometimes though, people also, they want to hear from me. They, they just want to talk. Sometimes it's just lonely. Well, you know how a lot of, a lot of brokers feel that like, oh my God, all my clients hate me. Like, yeah. you know, and then after closing, all of them hate me again, you know, yeah. like during closing, they're okay, but then they hate me again. <laughs> so it's, uh, it's I a mean, high emotion listen, game. It, it is, it is, you know, as much as I try to take uh, the emotions out of, yeah, out of everything else, I mean, we're still we're still human beings, though. Like, yeah. We're oh, still yeah. people. Like we can, we can just, we can just c completely emotionally detach, detach ourselves from every situation, right. right? Because especially when you're shopping with the first-time home buyers, I mean, those are emotional buyers. Yeah. Those are emotional shoppers. So you try to tailor yourself to the needs of every single person that you're taking out. You know, be like, hey, we're looking for a big yard because of X, Y, and Z. And then when you see something with a big yard, you try to fit that emotional, like fit that to that emotional level yeah. that. You gotta get excited when you see something with a big yard too. Not yeah. because you're just gonna make a sale, but because you're like, hey, that's gonna make that person happy. Yeah, which is a good thing though. <laughs> like that's that's why like one of the one of the things I like I like about the job. Yes, yeah. I would say though right now just finding the right opportunity, the right house is exciting because the inventory is so tough. Mm -hmm. 
dealing with as many clients as you're dealing, how do you prospect for new properties and opportunities? Like you, you have your show next picks, right? We do that once a week. You are finding the three best opportunities. You also find a lot in the Chicago land areas so or mm -hmm. suburbs or whatnot. But for clients that are like, how many active clients are you working with at this moment? Would you say? Like close to 30, 30, like think mm -hmm. about that. So you have 30, if the 30 right houses pop up, you're going to do 30 sales. Can I say that? Yeah. But 30 houses don't pop up. No. You know, you're, sure you're, I would say you're doing what? Like one deal a week ish every two weeks. Would you say this year? Um, the first three quarters I was doing pretty decent. Like, um, I was doing probably like five, like four sales a month or something yeah. like that. Then, uh, unfortunately, I fell off a little bit starting September, October, November. It was a little slow for me, that specific, that three months. But, I mean, I also took a vacation, too. So Yeah, like, not I, bad. Like, I, 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 blame okay. myself, I blame myself for that. You're not blaming. You were still working your ass off. Yeah, but it takes me, well, the whole, uh, how do I put it, the whole routine behind it is you have to follow the time schedule that you set for yourself the night before. Yeah, okay. So that's you, you do time blocking the night before? You have to. There is no other way because you, in order for... Listen, for some clients, uh, I know that, I know that especially investors, right? If you set them on automatic searches on the right properties and you send them everything over, some of my investors that work with me for a longer time, they send me properties. I mean, of course, I do look for them as well. But they send me specific properties okay. and basically ask me to run the numbers, okay. which makes my life a little bit easier. But I do at least once a day go over the, their specific criteria and kind of automatically like I can for for cheaper properties, like, for example, for Nick, for Nick, Nick's picks, I can definitely do. I don't even have to run the numbers to know right. if it's a good deal or not, <laughs> because I've done it so many times. I'm familiar with the majority of the buildings that they're already rentable in certain yeah. area. And I can do the numbers in my head and I can spot a deal if it's good or not based on just looking at looking at the number of bedrooms, yeah. the um, HOA fee, the price that is listed, the taxes, when it was last sold. So it takes me about like, I don't know, a couple of couple of minutes to run through three or four buildings and find something right yeah. away. For first time home buyers, when uh, it's just a, a, a lot more complicated, right? You do have to follow a specific criteria. If these people haven't bought for you yet, this is where you're looking for that value that you bring. Yeah. Like, do a little bit more research, do a little bit more digging, suggest them properties. Right. Be like, hey, I know you're looking for this and this and this and this. That's the price range, but look at this and this. That might be a good option as well. So that kind of makes these people think, be like, hey, I yeah. might be able to go a little bit outside the pocket and find something just tiny yeah. bit, but maybe better price that will help in future. I think a lot of people get, uh, they miss the idea of prospecting also is almost equated to the amount of prospecting for properties, mm -hmm. right? So everybody's always looking for new opportunities in business or whatever, but the amount of clients that are actively looking for you to give them like, options, you have to spend that time, the mm -hmm. amount of equated amount of time to look for those options. And yeah. it's right now really challenging, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, I've done, you look at if, a, if you know that there's a specific area, maybe a specific building that somebody wants to be, mm -hmm. you take a look at canceled listings True. over the last few years. You call their last broker. Hey, because they have a relationship with the seller, do you think that they would be interested in selling? You yeah. find some opportunities that way, right? We have dialers now mm -hmm. that are starting to call out in these specific areas that are being looking directly for sellers. Are you interested oh, in selling? Oh, we actually starting doing that, right? Oh, yeah. No, it's amazing. Gonna be yeah, it's, it's going to be great. Um, but it's like... This race, it's always been about value, mm -hmm. right? It's always been about um, how can you offer more than somebody next door, right? Because at the end of the day, like, yeah, if somebody has a real estate license, sure, they can also represent you to, to, to buy or sell their home. Mm -hmm. But then it's all of these different things that you give that are better than anybody else. We're starting with prospecting, right? Starting with negotiations, all of the relationships with the other brokers, all mm -hmm. of these different things, your, the way that you uh, approach uh, even how you talk to the other broker, right? Because yep. a lot of other brokers right now, they are not having a great time. They are stressed. They're pissed. They want to get deals done, but they also are ready to cut corners, and you have to, A, protect your client to see that when it's coming, and also a lot of hand-holding for brokers that are just so stressed out with, with sellers that have been hammering on them for months and being like, all right, I've done this a lot of times th this year, is like, hey, 
broker, listing broker, this is how we should go to your yeah. seller. They're looking for help. Yeah. Calm your stocks down and go talk to your seller. Yeah. Basically. Yeah. Um, I, for me, as a person who works with a lot of investors, it's very important because you know how investors' mind operates, right? It's like, hey, the place is 350. Let's start with 300. Yeah. 300 might be an insulting offer if they actually, if they price it well. It's a very insulting offer, yeah. right? But if you've been on the market for 108 days. But before you go on, would you say that if they priced it well, it wouldn't be on the market for that long right now? Because the market does react positively true. to properly priced properties. That's true, right? Like, so, I mean, of course, it's uh, it's the timing of the market, right? You can't expect, um, the sellers can't expect spring prices, spring prices at, in winter. Right. Like, it's just not going to happen. Right. Like you're not gonna get you're not gonna get that 350 in in November. You know that you say that. What's what's I've actually experienced as well is that you know these sellers they try to get crazy prices or much higher prices in spring summer, right? Where they started really really high, mm -hmm. and now they're at a price. Yes, they've done they've done price drops, but they didn't do it aligned with how the market has gone down. Six months too late, man. Right. So it's like yeah, no, no, this was the right price. You're correct. Yeah. When we talked six months ago. Mm -hmm. But now the market is way down. So that's just the natural order. And that is the problem with a lot of listing brokers not giving the proper information to sellers. Because it's not that we don't have inventory. There's, just, there's a ton of inventory out there. It's that it's all incorrectly priced and mm -hmm. out of value line of what buyers are willing to pay. Correct. And they've been now with six months later with these sellers, they're just exhausted. They can't tell them the same thing over and over again because they started the conversation incorrectly. I found out that if you don't price the property from the beginning, even though you tell the seller, hey, listen, we can try this number, but this is the actual price. Let's say 475 is where they want to go to, but you tell them, listen, it's got to be around the 420s, 430s. Okay, cool. Let's just try for it. Let's just see what happens. Mm -hmm. Once that number hits, it's as if the lower number was never discussed. It's like, what are you doing? What are the marketing things you're doing? Why are you not? Why isn't the property not selling? I'm like, you can't force some people to overpay for a property, especially in this market. Would you recommend to like, for example, you you do have a lot of listings. You handle a lot of listings. Would you recommend to kind of price ahead of the market a little bit? Always. Like, for example, if you're if you're pricing hypothetically, you're in the worst case scenario, you're pricing October. Yeah. October, November, right? This is the worst time to. To, yeah. to price a, to put a property on the yeah. market, would you recommend it to price it with basically November December prices, you have even, to. even a little bit lower, or uh, put it on private and go like put it in the pockets and basically go wait to shoot it on live market in February or March when is the yeah. best time to price? So it depends on the seller situation. If they have to sell, you have to be very blunt about it, right? Yeah. You have to be priced ahead of the market so the market. Up grabs it as it's going down, and then you kind of interlink with the value and mindset for the buyers. For sellers that are willing to try it out, right, or they, they are willing to wait it out, mm -hmm. I'm doing this right now with a few of my listings. You put it on the private market at the price you're going to list it at down the line, and it's like, hey, buyers, at the end of the day, this price most likely is going to be going more than that number mm -hmm. when, once we get onto the on market because there's going to be multiple offers yeah. in the Q1. So you can get the deal now, but we're not giving you a below market deal for no reason because my seller can wait. So it's a whole it's a whole strategy. But the whole thing is is like regardless, you have to understand what the sellers take need that what they need, mm -hmm. and you need to price it well from the start. You can't just be like throwing things on the wall and seeing what hits. You just can't do that in this market. Which I see a lot. Yeah, I know. Like, I see a lot. I um, <laughs> I go with. Uh, that's one of my biggest frustrations. I probably bitch about it in the office like 24-7 yeah. about it is how unprofessional listing brokers have become. Oh, yeah. It's mind-boggling. Like, for me to show, like, let's say last week, from Monday to Sunday, I showed probably about 40 properties to eight, nine different buyers. Three listing agents met me at the properties. Like, that shows, for me, that shows such a disrespect to the seller itself. Do you know how many buyers, uh, do you know how many sellers actually showed their own properties? How many? A lot. That's like wild. probably half of those people. Was it like super discount brokerages or they just maybe told the sellers this you is know, how it goes You know, I mean, now? I, but like, um, I, Johnny sells houses at yahoo.com technically okay. and you <laughs> That's ask, not a real email. <laughs> probably maybe, is actually, but not, not someone he's working maybe with. Maybe not, not somebody I'm working <laughs> with, yeah. <laughs> but you know, like uh, this person, like I request a showing through showing time. The only thing that this person did was actually hit accept and in the notes, seller will show. Yeah. And then people wonder why 
everybody's suing the real estate industry. Well, that's why. It's like, what are you doing? Like, why the hell is this person paying you money? Right. Like, no, you didn't true. do shit. What's the value? It's all value where based. Is, where is the value showing to you? Actually, like, you you're not even attempting to sell to sell that house. Right. You know, you went there and like you didn't even put a lockbox. Yeah, you're hoping. Like, it's so it's so disrespectful to me, and this is what I'm, I've been struggling with communicating with brokers basically what you're trying to say is like you know this is the best time for people to buy houses is between october and december right yeah so what i'm struggling is to get those people on the phone yeah and let's say you're a listing broker and be like hey greg this is nick with Besta. how's your day going mm -hmm. good i have a buyer for one two three main street you know we love the house we're willing to shoot an offer right the offer will be this this is what this is where we're starting Again, if it's way too low of an offer, I'm kind of like, I'm, I don't automatically go and be like, hey, listen, there's room for improvement and all that stuff. The ball is in your court. Present it to your seller. You've been on the market for like 150 days. It's like almost half a year, you know? Yeah. Present it to your seller. Give us a counter if, yeah. if, if you don't like it. Of course, you're not going to like it. I mean, it's fucking 25% discount. Right. Like, give us, a, give us a counter. That's all I'm asking for. I'm being nice to you. I'm being professional. I'm calling you out yeah. of courtesy. I'm not just like attached to this email is the offer for one to three Main Street. The house is listed for four hundred. We're giving you three twenty. Yeah. And just wait. Right. You know, people don't even, like the amount of times that the brokers don't even list their goddamn fucking phones in the MLS. Like, there is no point of contact with that person. Yeah. There is no like if I shoot an email, there is no like, there is no response. There's no call back. Yeah. I leave a voicemail. There's no texting back. You're waiting for like three days to get a response right. on an offer after you call them three times after you send an it's offer. It's wild, right? I mean, because it's like, I think it's, it's so 24 hours. You have to. Unprofessional. You, you, have to, you have to deliver all offers within 24 hours. <laughs> I mean, but the, truly, like, that, that is like something that, you know, you can. You would think, yeah. Well, I mean, that's the law. Yeah, do you would think that that's the I mean, law, but, yeah. But, but, like, you know, th there is opportunity to, uh, yeah, again, like, at the end of the day, like, Yes, you can report them, but like also, like what do you what do you think? You're going to report them. It's going to make them like more into your offers. Like that's the thing is like our number one goal and job is to watch the buyer's interests, our clients' mm -hmm. interests, right? Pissing match with the sell with the listing broker is going to do the opposite. I learned that early on in my career. Yeah. Right. So I always am like I'm guided. My guiding light, my shining light in the transaction is my client's best interest, mm -hmm. and it always goes against what I want to say to the other side. So, but with that, I've also found. Uh, a few st uh, strategies and tactics with uh, in, in in these in these times, I actually write out. And I think you do this too, where I give the full snapshot of where and how our offer is presented and why, with comps and graphs and all that stuff, because you know what they're going to do. Mm -hmm. Forward it right on to the seller, mm -hmm. and and because I I'm, I want to do your job for you because I know you're not going to present my case better than me, mm -hmm. right? And more often times than not, brokers agree, but they won't say it but then they just forward it on. So it starts a line of communication. And when they come back to me with a, well, we're not gonna counter or, well, you know, or some crazy counter or whatever, way too high, I'm, I actually open up the door. I'm like, listen, I'm, I gave you comps. Can you just give me where and how you see this value, mm -hmm. right? Like, where is this coming from? Help me help you. Yep. And more often times than not, actually every single time, <laughs> we know the market. Every single time. Yeah they can't come up with comps because all I want them to say is the seller just wants this number and he has no reasoning for it. Yeah. Right. But they won't ever say that, mm -hmm. but you keep beating them down to the po to the point where they're just on your team. They're like, okay, I know, I know. Um, let, let me, let me see what I can do. Let me see what I can do. And then you get them on your side and then you give them strategies on what to go with the seller. It happens so many times. It's, I call it a marathon negotiation because it takes a long time, but it takes while to start chipping away at the confidence, overconfidence of these brokers to say that I actually don't know what to do here. Help me out. Hands out. Nobody says that, though. They won't say it, but they can show through their actions, True. especially if you give them the right, the, uh, the right data. True. No, I... I, I mean, how do you get your deals on that, that? That's exactly how you do it. True. Yeah. I mean, I, I get it by honestly being nice, not, not being an asshole right. on the other side. Yeah. Like, that's all it is, you know? It's, it's like just it like breaks it, barriers down better than anything else. Which think about it it's so much more productive than i mean for example i love uh, i mean you know you lead either with the carrot or the stick right i mean i see brad sometimes brad lives with a stick sometimes but that that's only when he gets in, pissed. in a way 
<laughs> that's only when he gets pissed. But if you correct, if you, but if you listen to what he says, it, makes it, makes the most sense. The most sense. And correct. but but the thing is, he's a beyond a frustrating person to talk to about this mm-hmm. stuff because even when he's wrong, he's right. Yeah. And you cannot like he's a guy that you will never get him off of his position. Yeah. Unless like literally you're like look, and then he's like. Nah, that's not right. <laughs> <laughs> but he's always coming in with facts, mm-hmm. and he never like calls people names or whatever. People yeah. just get frustrated because he does present his case in a very, very strong way. Now that doesn't that rubs people the wrong way sometimes. Yeah. So you have to change your change the delivery. But his context is correct most of the time. I mean, he makes sense. He does make sense. Yeah. That's... He's he's beyond frustrating. <laughs> that's one of my one of my goals for this series too, like being coached the bread way <laughs> you know like <laughs> be like listen samantha like this is what it is right don't so, do that like don't do in that reality this is gonna do this and this don't you know? do that brad has me brad has me to come and swoop and be be the be the nice guy you know be, be mr oh be really mr. <laughs> be, be mr sensitive i've had a few times where i swoop in and i'm like hey i know i know everything's gonna be so i'm the good cop bad cop good cop you know i can't swoop in for you you know what i mean you got you got to play both sides I mean, it's uh, like you know. Again, it's a it's a learning it's a learning process. Yeah. Like I said, you tailor differently to a different buyer and to a different opposite broker. Like listing listing broker, yeah. if you work, or just the opposition. You you have to tailor differently to every single situation. Yeah. You have to be like sort of a chameleon, you know. Yeah, is we're that, is that beyond the way you it? Chameleon. Chameleon. Chameleonaires. That's hilarious. You know, there's a rapper called Chameleonaire. No. Yeah, he had one song, one hit song. I loved it. Interesting. Anyway, yeah. But uh, like you said, how do you, how, like, for example, you asked me the question, how do you uh, work with 30 showing, the 30 buyers yeah, that right. are actually actively looking, right? For some buyers, um, I've done so many searches. Yeah. So many days in a row, like so many weeks. Right. So many months even sometimes that once you hit that safe search, and you see what's on the market and nothing stands out, you basically text them like once every couple of days and be like, listen, yeah, there's just nothing. Yeah. For what you're looking for, unless you want to change a little change, bit, yeah. change the criteria, expand a little bit, maybe up, yeah. up the budget, down on the bathrooms or bedrooms or whatever it is, remove the garage or right. whatever the situation is, unless you're willing to do right. that, this is what's out there. There's absolutely nothing I can do for you. I can't I can go and build your fucking house. Yeah. That's 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 the reality. Right. I, I just can't do it. There is nothing on the market. That's what it is. Like, of course, I don't say it that way. I say right. it in a polite way and be like, "Listen, I just conduct another search for you. Like, you are set on Zenlist, on um, yeah. MLS, you on see. private, on ten. You see. you see what's out there. I'm looking right. at the same things that you're looking at. Nothing stands out to me. There are a couple of new places. That's that's what the new addresses are that came out. They don't. The numbers don't work. They're not in your. They're either not. Uh, if you're an investor producing enough enough cash flow for you or whatever you want to do, uh, or they they don't fit your budget, they yeah. don't fit your criteria. That's that's all new. That's what it is. It takes me about two minutes to get this out of the way, and then move on to the next one who actually looks. Yeah. But uh, unfortunately, there's just nothing you can do at some point. It's just relationship management. It's, it's frustrating, but it is a it is a relationship management until something else, uh, until something new hits the market yeah. that actually fits the criteria. But Surprise, surprise, like your buyer is not the only one looking for that specific product. There is another 17 jump people on looking it. and yeah. you got to jump on it. If they don't, even if they do, even if they do, which is the most frustrating part about the, the winter market, is like you keep promising those people that you can get a discount. Yeah. Right. But then something specific, something so tailored to their search pops up on the market. And there's another five people putting yeah, up for multiple right? offers. And at some point, be like, listen, Sure, I promise you that I can find a 400k place that you might be able to get a good discount on. It's a multiple offer situation, baby. But discounts come with your ability to give up on some things, and you're not willing to give up these things, right? So it's it's also about coaching and consulting, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, at the end of the day, it's like it just truth. Truth is, yeah, the truth, and get, making sure people understand the reality of the market. Mm-hmm. And it's it's like yes, there's deals to be had if you're willing to make a deal happen, yeah. but you're not because you're not willing to give up X, Y, and Z. But so many people are not willing to do either. So that's why we have multiple offers on the right properties. Yeah. Um, all right. So let's finish up here. We have 2024. We're going in. You're uh, setting goals right now with Brad. What or, is on? Already did. Yeah. What, what's on the agenda for 2024 for you? Partnership. Okay. Let's go. That's it. Yeah. How are you going to get there? 
by working my ass off. Yeah, but what do you go, you already do? So what are you gonna do to change it around and do the 15 million this year? More phone calls. Okay. I've always struggled with um, actually getting people on the phone, actually calling people. Okay. Like, I'm really good with text messages. Yeah, right. You Everybody know, is. I do have so many, so many buyers that are in my long term or even nurturing buyers or people who I'm actively working with. So I noticed that I have the tendency to neglect people like, for example, past renters. Mm. I did so many rentals in right. the back and I only texted and I caught three of my past renters that bought something in March with somebody else. Yeah. So my goal for this year is to call a lot more. Yeah. Like to be annoying. So I like so unfortunately I'm I'm going to be annoying. So if somebody, some of my past renters are looking, expect to call once a month every goddamn month. Yeah. Well, I mean, like also it's it's a learned trait. It is a it's a habit. Yeah. Um, and I've actually been thinking about us doing it as a collective whole, right? So it's like keeping everybody accountable. Hey, we're gonna be doing dials 9 a.m. Mm -hmm. Tuesdays and Thursdays. So everybody come in. Just this is what we do. We set it aside. It's, you know. Well, well I don't think that's going to work specifically because, like, you know, you you have to adjust your schedule. No, you got to adjust your schedule. Towards your showings, you know. So, But, but it's yeah, also, I, but yeah. what I've also learned is that, like, calling before 9 or after 5 is the best time to catch people, mm -hmm. too. So it's like you got to think about that. But also at the same time, just do it. Just getting it done. Put Getting yourself into the uh, Leave a voicemail. E voicemail. Following up with the text then, and then giving them a d added value with like, you know, emails and good value and good like quarterly reports and all that stuff that we're starting. Yeah, me and Brad were actually talking about it. Is if you think about it, the, the real estate industry it's, it's uh, so like fast moving, fast paced yeah. about, and there's always something to talk about each month. Oh yeah. So if you set a goal to call almost all of your sphere in a month, like you do like 25 calls a day. You know, I mean, I don't have that big of a but still, I don't have that. It's big a lot of, of calls. Yeah, I, mean, I don't that, have that that's big like of a network. A solid hour, an hour, like easy an hour. Hour, hour and a half. day, like about twenty, about yeah. uh, 20, 20 phone calls a day. Yeah. But there's always like if you knock those people out, that like you basically some some of them are just not answering the phone, yeah. you know. But you gotta do what you gotta do. But right? that will one thousand percent get you to your partnership number. We'll see. Yeah, man. Uh, last question: Why would anybody use you as their broker? What's your pitch? Oh God, I haven't worked on that. Yet. Ah, you gotta get ready. Yet. No, no, no. I'm preparing for the. I'm preparing for the next year. Though. Okay, well, just I'm try. Preparing it. for the next. Why year. would I use a broker, Nick? Oh man, honestly, I'm a gold digger. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that's the show. <laughs> that's it. I'm a gold digger, man. I mean, I found I find such a good properties like all the time. Like, um, you know, I mean, gold digger can be interpreted as a yeah, well, know, sure, sure, yeah. But we could we could work on the wording, I, value hunter. No, nah, I think go. I, I think I'll stick with gold digger. Okay, I, I mean, mean I, that people will remember you. That's for sure. I I don't care if they it's like you know get your mind out of the gutter at some <laughs> point, but <laughs> it it is though. Like, but I mean, it means it's catchy. So I, get, I literally scout the market every yeah, single day in like so many different areas that if um You're and cap, I, I, I captain have a, value. I have a really good experience with um, renting. And knowing the value of a rental, if I see it specifically, yeah. <clears throat> because to provide a value for a, for, for a first-time home buyer and an investor is a com it's a completely different animal. Yeah. Right? For a first-time home buyer, I mean, there is very little difference, be like from broker to broker for first-time home buyers, right? Because sure, maybe. I mean, in terms of like, okay, if you're a professional, if you're uh, if you learn how to do the comps correctly, yeah. if you learn the value of the home, at some point it's about it, it, it's coming down to the vocabulary and how do you communicate with the other side to get something done. Yeah, right. When it comes to investing, is a lot more a lot right, more sure. to it, and you do have That's to be saying. knowledgeable about um, about the rentals because the biggest part about finding a good deal is how much you can rent it for. Yeah, I mean you can buy a place that it's worth five hundred thousand dollars, you can buy it for a hundred k, yeah, and if you can't rent it for I don't know like a thousand bucks a month, it's not working. Yeah. So for me, like I said, I'm a gold digger. I just dig for gold yeah. 24-7. But I think you also hit something uh, really, really important. I think that what we all have to understand is that we can't help everybody, right? Correct. At the end of the day, finding your niche and your specialty on what you excel at mm -hmm. is probably the best way to get the best clients and give the most value, Yeah. right? Cli yes, sure. Any broker can help a first-time home buyer. 
but not every broker can help a first time home buyer in the best way. Right? No, that's that 100% yeah, true. Don't that, get don't get me wrong. I mean, I I still want to make a distinction like I said, in the past week I showed 40 properties and I can tell you that 37 of those sellers should fire their listing brokers. <laughs> I'm not even joking. That's like 99%. Yeah. Like 90, and 90%, I do see yeah. the value for example like the way that you and Brad are coaching. Yeah. I see the value in that I can provide towards a, a first time first time home buyer when it comes to it. I can see it that I'm like with with the confidence I can tell with the confidence that I'll work my ass for you and I'll I'll answer the phone 24/7, you know, sure boundaries and all that shit, but it's real estate. There's no fucking Yeah, boundaries. man. I'm here. Like yesterday I was shooting offers until like 8:30 at night, you right. know. Uh but it's a beautiful thing, isn't it? It's awesome, man. I it's like fun. it. I like it. I mean, uh, but yeah, that's for me. Our company makes a difference, you know. I mean, of course, we're not the only company who is like really good out there. There's yes, like we're the other only ones. We're the only ones. What do you mean? We're the only good ones. Okay. <laughs> Like, fuck you all. Then. Like, <laughs> yeah, that's this, the show, cut, baby. Cut this out. Yeah. <laughs> no, but no, I, mean, I got like, you. I got you. You know what I mean? Like, because sometimes it's a pleasure to work with a professional on the other side. Yeah. And oh, you can, and you pleasure. Can, it's, it's like a it's it's hope. so rare that like when somebody actually does their job correctly, it you're is like, rare. Holy crap! Yeah. This that was that felt nice. That felt nice. Yeah. <laughs> but. Yes, when it comes to when it comes to the value that we provide our company, and not only me, I mean, yeah. I would consider that the every single every single broker investor is like basically on the same level because they're coached the same. Required, yeah. Which this is the this is the beauty of the company. This is the beauty that we grow as a team. Yeah. But yeah, at the end of the day, there's just my value is uh, I don't know, man. Yes, you do. <laughs> You just said it so many times, but you gotta practice it. Yeah, I guess. I mean, I just work my ass off. Yeah. Like I provide value, sure. If you want me to fight for you, I'll, yeah. I'll fight tooth and nail to get you the best deal possible. Which I mean, everybody can say that. You know what I mean? Like yeah. soon enough, you're gonna say when somebody asks you that question, "Have you heard of Nick's picks?" And then what it's gonna come down to <laughs> is that what people are gonna be like, "Hey, you're Nick from Nick's picks." And then it's gonna just you're not even gonna have any issues. I hope so. 2024 is going to be a good year. 2024. My man, let's do it. <laughs> that was awesome.